Example three looks at factoring trig functions. When you want to factor a trig function, chances are your equation is going to have just a single trig function, and it's going to have both a square and a first power. When that happens, you want to treat it like a quadratic equation. So what we're going to do first is set your equation equal to zero. So we start with sine squared x minus sine of x equals sine of x plus 3. We're going to subtract a sine from both sides. We're also going to subtract 3 from both sides. This will give us sine squared x minus 2 sine x minus 3 equals 0. Just treat your sine of x as any variable. So this is analogous to having x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. When we know that x squared minus 2x minus 3 is going to factor into x and x, we get 1 and 3, we're going to have a plus 1 minus 3. So we're going to apply the same idea over here. We get sine of x and sine of x, we're going to get plus 1 and minus 3. Now we just need to solve both of these equations, setting them equal to 0. We get sine of x plus 1 equals 0, and sine of x minus 3 equals 0. This gives us sine of x equals negative 1, sine of x equals positive 3. Now, because we're solving for x, to move sine to the other side, we need to use sine inverse. And if you plug this in, and you get sine inverse of negative 1, we find that that occurs at 90 degrees or pi over 2, or negative 90 or 3 pi over 2 radians. You can also use your unit circle and realize that we're there at 3 pi over 2. Because that is when sine is negative 1. So our answer for this first one is 3 pi over 2. Well then, for sine of x equals 3, what we should realize is we're never more than one radius length away from the center of our circle. So we're never three radius lengths away. Thus, anything that's greater than le one or less than negative one, there's no real solution. And if you were to plug this into your calculator, if you were trying to find sine inverse of three, your calculator is going to return an error. That's because there's no real solution for part two. Thus, our only answer is x equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi times n, where n is an integer. Because remember, we can go any number of laps that we want to before we come back to that angle. Go full lap and then reach 3 pi over 2, two full laps and then 3 pi over 2, and so on.